All right, it took about seven and a half minutes for this thing to finish, but now I should actually be able to log in to the vManage terminal. So I'm going to say again, admin and admin, and now I see that I have logged in. Now, the thing that I want to caution everybody about at this particular juncture is the fact that this is not a router. This is a Viptela product called the vManage server. And the whole goal here is, is to set it up in such a way that we're going to be able to interact with it and eventually set up all of the other components, meaning the vBond, the vSmarts, and the vEdge devices. So it's going to be from here that we're going to manage everything. However, to get it to the point where we can actually work with it, we're going to have to understand a little bit more about it. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to go back to the light board. I want to talk about these constructs. So what we're talking about right now is the vManage. Now the vManage, as I said, is a virtual machine. Now it acts like a router. It's got a command line interface that is Cisco-esque. And what we want to do is we want to understand how we're going to interact with it. Now, it does, believe it or not, do IP support. And specifically, inside of the vManage, in fact, in all of our devices, we're going to have the device divided into two sections. We call these VPNs, or at least that's what the terminology was adopted. I, we call them, like I said, VPNs, virtual private networks. But what I want my networking people to think of is, I want you to think of VRFs, virtual routing and forwarding instances, because that's pretty much what they are. And we have one that is referred to as VPN0, and we have one that is referred to as VPN512. Now, 512 is the equivalent of a management VRF. So it's basically a management network where VPN zero is going to end up being a data network. And specifically in our lab, if you pay attention to the way that I have this implemented, remember I said all of these devices are going to be connected into this little island of internet interconnectivity that I have called the internet. I mean, there's nothing little about it. But ultimately what we're going to do is we are going to take this interface right here and this is where we're going to do all of our basic configuration. Now, I've made the, com the command decision to pretty much ignore the management VPN. Why? Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm basically going to be emulating an on-prem configuration that's very, very similar or at least akin to the way that Cisco would actually be hosting these resources. So everything is going to be one-armed. My vManage is going to be one-armed. My vBond will be one-armed and my the smart servers will controllers will be one armed. So ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to ignore VPN 512 and what we're going to do is we're going to make some critical decisions because we need to configure all of these resources such that these resources are going to work, which means I need to configure VPN 0. Now that's going to include assignment of interfaces. It's going to include setting up of NTP servers. It's also going to include configuration for what we'll know as our SD-WAN specific configs. And we really haven't talked about those yet. So what I want to do right now is I just want to go in and get the basics set up. So that's behind us. Because once you've seen it done, what will end up happening is, is it should give it more meaning when we start talking about the way we're going to be doing our implementations. So we've got the basic configuration set up. Let's go ahead and set up the SDN component and then we'll take a look at what's involved in configuring and working with our VPN zero configs. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. All right, so from the perspective of the devices, there are some things that I want us to know. So as an example, I can execute a show run here and it'll give me my running configuration. And like I said, it is very, very Cisco-esque. However, it's still not the same. So you can't use a lot of commands that you're, you know from like iOS. But again, there are going to be similar values. So we see here VPN0. And notice VPN0 owns Ethernet0. Now, if I look at my drawing for the vManage, I have Ethernet0 is connected to the control switch. And it is going to be on that Ethernet segment. And I said, for the purposes of our conversations and our lab, VPN0 represents internet. We'll create other VPNs 
to represent other segments later. But right now what we're doing is we're building all of the components to allow the controller to work, which means we're constructing the control plane devices. Now, with that being said, what I want to do is I want to get it set up to where I can configure the vManager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my jump box configuration here, and I'm going to bring up my secure CRT. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to configure it. So just like a router, it's going to be config T. Next command I'm going to use is system. This is going to be the configurational context that I'm going to use to set up everything related to the SD-WAN configuration. That's going to include a number of things. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a host-name, and I'm going to call it vManage-1. Then I'm going to give it a site ID. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call every device that's going to be part of the controller group. So everything that's in this on-prem box that I had illustrated over here. Let me go ahead and minimize this and drag it down. So everything that's in this on-prem box right now is going to be part of the same site ID. And I'm going to call it site ID 100. Third octet of my IP address is 100. That's the reason I set that up. And I'm going to assign a, a system IP address. And the system IP address is just going to be 1721. And in this instance, I'm going to say 0. And I'll use the, the last four. So ultimately, the vManage is going to be 2.1. So I'll say 2.1. So when it comes for the vBond, it'll be 2.2, 2.3. I cannot have the system ID match the IP address that I'm going to configure on my VPN0 interface. So just be aware of that. The other thing that I'm also going to do is I'm going to specify my organization name. Our organization name is going to be micronicslab.com. That will need to match on every device because that's what I use to construct my certificates. And we're going to have to go through that process. But right now I'm just talking about basic functionality and reachability for my devices. Now, with the vManage set up, the other thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to tell the vManage how to get to the vBond because I'm doing a on-prem configuration and that's going to be 172.1.100.202 is the identity of my vBond. So I have my host name, I have my site ID, I have my system IP, I have my organizational name, I have my vBond. What I want to do now is I want to apply this configuration to this device. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say commit. So it says commit complete. So now if I execute a do show run, I should actually be able to see those values that I put in. You can see there is the vBond. There is the organizational name. There is the host name. There is the system IP. And in fact, you should be able to see that it adopted the host name. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to set up the IP address that I'm going to use. And in order to be able to do that, I need to configure those IPs. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into VPN0. Because remember, I said we weren't going to use 512. So with this being done, what I want to do now is I'm going to assign a default route. I'll say IP route. We'll just use quad zero. And I'm going to send it to 172.100.254. Oh, I'm sorry, 1, 100, 254. That's the IP address on my SVI. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the interface. So I'll say interface. And the interface that I'm going to be using is going to be E0. ETH0. It needs to be spelled properly. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say IP address 172.1.100.201.24. And I'm going to say no shut. Now what I want to do is I want to apply this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say commit and see if it lets me apply the configuration. And it did. If I do show run interface, actually we'll do show run VPN, zero. Uh, do show, let the show off. We can see that VPN zero, interface Ethernet zero, has been given this IP address and it is no shut and it is using the static route. So now what I want to do is I want to set up my time server. 
Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go back to Internet. And I'm going to say Show Clock. And we see here it's July 21st, 2019. Everything's good to go here. All I'm going to do is turn this into a time server. I'm going to say NTP Master. Exit, copy, run, start. And with that done, I'm going to configure my vManage device. So I'm going to say exit, exit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say NTP server will be 172.1.100.254. I want to prefer that, and I want to function in VPN 0. VPN 0, NTP. The NTP server is not taking time. Interesting. One second here. VBond, admin, admin, configure T. Oh, did I step all the way out? Exit. System. That's what it is. I exited out of the system. I went out too far. NTP server and I'll say one seven two one one hundred two five four we want to prefer this we'll do prefer and I'm going to say I want to use VPN zero all right, there we go. So now I'm going to exit and exit out of NTP. And what I want to do now is I'm going to say clock time zone. And I'm going to say I want to use America and I'll use New York as my time. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit commit. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say and quit, which is going to take me all the way back out to my start. And it says commit complete. Now all I want to do is I want to do a ping. Now the beauty of using VPN zero is you don't have to. I'm sorry, VPN zero. You do not have to specify the VPN, and that's one of the. Re this is one of the reasons that I said I want you guys to think of a VPN like a VRF. So if I come over here and say ping one seven two one one hundred one, and I don't specify an IP a VRF, notice it's using the VPN zero by default. Now, I can verify that if I did come over here and say VPN zero, you'll see that it does take it and it does work. So for the perspective of setting this up, all I really want to do now is get into my host. I'm going to go ahead and stop this ping. I'm going to get back into my jump box. And from my jump box, what I want to do is see if I can actually ping that device. So let's say 201. And we see that I can. So let's see if I can actually browse to it. So again, this might be one of those that takes a little bit of time for us to get everything set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to browse to the IP address of 172.1.100.201. And it says it's insecure because it's self-signed. Yes, I'll add the exception, confirm the security exception. And here we are. We are faced with the login. And if you want to log in, it's simple. It's admin, admin, which is the default. I'll go ahead and save the configuration. And here we are at the dashboard. Now, it's a pretty empty dashboard. In fact, one could go so far as to say it's almost kind of bleak. But we got to start somewhere. And this is exactly the way we do it. So right now we've got the vManage up and operational, but we haven't done the vBond and we haven't done the vSmart. So those are going to be the next two components. All I'm trying to do right now is obtain reachability with regard to ensuring that I can connect to all of these devices. Now the ultimate test is going to be from the jump box, I want to be able to SSH into every one of these controller constructs. And by that I'm talking about the vManage, 
the V-Bond, and the V-Smart. Now in the next video, we're going to be setting up the V-Bond in such a way that the V-Bond is actually going to be able to provide the orchestration services that we described. And you may or may not be surprised to learn that the V-Bond is just a V-Edge. In fact, it's just a V-Edge that's being configured to function as the V-Bond. So again, it, that it, in all honesty, is basically a routing. It's a router. It's a forwarding engine, has the capability of being able to build tunnels and sessions. And what we're going to do is, as soon as we get the lab built, we're going to talk about the actual underlying control plane. And we're going to take a look at things like transport layer security. We're going to look at datagram transport layer security. And we're also going to need to build certificates. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but we've got to go step by step by step to make certain that we can bring up a functional SD-WAN environment. I'm Terry Vincent, and I'll see you guys in the V-Bond video.